Gamers on Games is sponsored in part by... Hi, this is Dennis with 3D Game Gear. We are gamers with a family-run business that specialize in 3D printed accessories for board games. We offer a wide range of items, including tokens, token cups, token boxes, player dashboards, and much more. We are always adding new items to enhance your gaming experience, so come check us out at the address below. In Bigfoot vs. Yeti, the players are cryptozoologists trying to prove the existence of their favorite cryptid, whether that's Yeti, Chupacabra, Loch Ness Monster, or what have you. Of course, you want to be the best cryptozoologist, so you're not above throwing your opponent's work into the tabloids. In addition, you are stuck in the unfortunate situation of a battle between Bigfoot or Yeti as to determine who is the king of the cryptids, and of course, being cryptozoologists, you all have an opinion on who that should be. The game is started by shuffling the deck, dealing 10 cards to each player to form a hand. The remaining cards are placed face down in the center of the table to form the unknown. The top card from the unknown is flipped up to start a discard pile, which is called the tabloids. On your turn, there are two things you must do. You must start your turn by always drawing cards either from the top of the unknown, or top of the tabloids, or the top of the unknown. You must always end your turn by discarding a card to the top of the tabloids. There are a number of things you can do during your turn. First, you'll notice there are two types of cards here. There are Expedition cards, which are two or three points, and then there are Lightning Bolts cards. These are action cards of varying point value. You can only play one action card per turn. For the most part, you'll be mounting and joining Expeditions. Mounting an Expedition is playing three or more of the same creature, so that is mounting a Loch Ness Monster Expedition. Each expedition also has one unique proof card that would be something that would prove beyond the shadow of a doubt to the scientific community that the creature exists. In this case, this would also be mounting a Nessie expedition, but that would also count as your one action card play for the turn. In addition, there are wild proof cards that are blurry photos because, of course, they are always blurry photos. So likewise, this would be mounting a Nessie expedition. The other thing you can do is join a expedition. Let's say this player had previously played this out. You can join a previous player's expedition. Now in the case of Bigfoot and Yeti, they are the same expedition even though they have different colors. So in this case I could join the Bigfoot expedition by playing this Yeti card. Each card also, when you play them, has an ability that you fire when you play the card. In this case, the Yeti ability, which is similar to the Bigfoot ability, is you take a card from an opponent, flip it to the side of that, that expedition, and add it to your expedition. And as I said, you must always end your turn, turn by discarding a card to the tabloids. This continues until every player, or until one player discards their last card to the tabloids. Then every player must discard a card from their hand to the tabloids. This has two functions. First, cards in your hand count, will be points that count against you when you score. And second, it's why it's called the tabloids. So, let's just say that this is the tabloids at the end of the round. So, after everyone has discarded cards to the tabloids, you go through and read the tabloids. Every story in the tabloids discredits your research. So. In this case, Jersey Devil. There's a story about the Jersey Devil. No one has mounted a Jersey Devil exhibition. I had Bigfoot's baby. That story uh, destroys um, the credibility of your research, so whoever has the most Bigfoot evidence in play must discard one card. In that case, that would be this player. So then you go through Chupacabra. No one has it. Gray cards never affect anything, etc. Finally, before the last thing you do before scoring is determine the winner of the Bigfoot versus Yeti battle. Whichever of the two cryptids has the most points wins the battle. In this case, there is eight points of Bigfoot evidence and five points of a Yeti evidence. So therefore, Yeti loses. These leave the game. They are valueless. Now, this looks like it only costs this player two points, but it's actually worse than that. Um, because at the end of the round, after the, after the tabloids and the Bigfoot versus Yeti battle is resolved, you add up the points amongst all players of all the cryptids. 
you have a cryptid that has 10 or more points for that cryptid, you have proven it to the point that the scientific community decides to relinquish and say, okay, maybe we should take a look at this. So in this case, this would be 20 points of Bigfoot for this player. But because some reporter had to put food on his table, it is only going to be 8 points now. Everyone's points are added up, the cards are collected, dealt again, and another hand is played. You play until one player crosses 100 points. When that player does, whoever has the most, when that happens, whoever has the most points wins the game. Usually that takes three to four hands. And that's Bigfoot versus Yeti.